All right. Hello and welcome to Shortspiel, the first ever, as far as I know, uh, short house bond spiel in the history of curling. And we're here at the Potomac Curling Club. And uh, yeah, we're about to get started. It's draw one. There's going to be many draws this evening. 14 draws. 14 draws this event's going to be. A so full, A full bond spiel in six hours. So I, just as we get underway, I'm going to start basically fill our viewers in on the rules because this is a little different to normal curling, as you can imagine. So the basic thing is people are throwing the rocks into the near house. So, so there's no sliding. There's no, there's going to be no sliding. People will have to have their feet in the hack. And uh, your, your body has to be parallel to the back of the hack. So that's right. So no lunging forwards. You no can lunge sideways, but not forwards. No advantages for tall people. It's very important. And um, so that's, that's step one. Uh, there's going to be it's six end games and four rocks per team. So it should go pretty fast. Uh, Strategy-wise, well, I don't think anyone has any idea at this point. So uh, as the games go, I think we'll get an idea of what the players come out with. I think a lot of these players, this is, might be their first ever, uh, sh you know, short house game. So we'll, we'll see how they how they cope with that. Um, the other kind of unusual thing is the um, alternating of rocks. So uh, unlike a normal curling, each player doesn't throw, you know, there are two rocks. It's, it sort of goes around. Each, each of the four players throws a rock, and, and then they refer another rock. All right, so we're underway here, as you can see. So we've got our um, we've got our house cam stri looking straight down. And we've also got our near field camera, so you can see the players. And you can see this is uh, Rob Chester here, just throwing. And you can see how he stretches out to the side. That's allowed. He has one foot on the hack. He can, can stretch as far as he wants sideways. It can be either foot, either hack. So so you can create angles that way. And you can see both teams are concentrating on controlling the top of the house. Um, as we look at the overhead camera, the, the players are throwing from the top of the screen down, just to just uh, to avoid confusion. And uh, good morning, Dana Kaiser. Thank you for watching Short Spiel. And yes, indeed, 17 people. Thank you so much for joining us. So the first end developing here. First end's almost over. That's how fast yep. this goes. It moves very fast. Looks um, like it's one yellow right now. It's one yellow right now, and yellow's about to throw. Looks like a tap up might be the shot. Yep. No, nice shot there from, uh, got from stay. Katie. The other subtlety is that if you knock any rocks, or your opponent's rocks, out of the house, and the in the valid zone is inside the 12 foot, uh, you have to replace that rock, just like uh, the free guard zone in normal normal curling. Ooh. Absolutely right. Oh, and there's this one. Looks so like it's going to hang on there. Yep. So even tap ups got to be very careful. There's a small margin of error if, if the rock goes out. Uh, Absolutely. So uh, so a nice lost. red sitting one here. It looks like it's going to be pretty hard for Yell to do anything about that. This is the last rock. I don't really see any way to remove that red, so I think it's going to be a steal of one. But he's going to try an angle. Now, now. Okay. So that's one, one red. red there in the first end, which was a steal. So as, as you can see, the game moves very fast. Uh, keep us on our feet here. That was one red. And I think there's going to be, uh, I just see Brandon putting it to the scoreboard, so there's going to be some, some scoreboards for this end of the sheet. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see on the, on the camera. Well, I hope so, but we will keep you up to date with the scores. Um, as we get them. So as you can see, I think one of the things we're going to see a lot is uh, trying to control the front of the house. That seems to be one of the obvious strategies you can employ in short spiel. I think everyone's just figuring out their weight here right now. Yes, I must say one of the more challenging things that I've found trying to play short spiel is to control the weight because, of course, you're not sliding. You're, it's all about the arm. Uh, it's very, very different. So, um, 
yeah, a lot of players will probably struggle to, uh, especially in those light taps, tap and rolls, that sort of thing. So both teams going right to the button here early in the second. Well, this looks like a nice, nice little shot from Rob. Nice little tap back. I think it's going to be interesting as the day evolves to see how people's strategy evolves. Because right now, I think it's all about controlling the button. But, you know, people aren't really taking advantage of guards and, and anything like that. I mean, guards, of course, inside the house, but still guards. Right now, everyone's just sort of freezing and tapping. But I think the strategy will get more complex. I think so. One of the things I was wondering is whether the team with the hammer might play out to the wings early. Uh, some stones around in the wings and then keep the center kind of more open, a bit, more, a bit like traditional curling. Uh, so it looks like I'm trying to create an angle here to tap this yellow. Not quite, well, quite a good result there because it's set up for a, for a raise to just push that yellow to the back of the house now without clipping the reds too much. So it's a tough situation here. You're running back that front yellow? Uh, that's right, red onto yellow. Should go through the hole no, yes. into the back of the house. And well, yellow uh, preempted that. So. Um, and then there's a big port open. Yeah, it so. Goes right into that where there's backing. And here comes last last rock. No, I'm sorry. Red does not have last rock. Just red's last stone, though. And he's probably going to make a play on that yellow to sit, oh, sit three or four even. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, this looks good if it's not too heavy. Yeah. Lovely shot. Uh, it's 4-4 four, four red. Red sitting 4. Here comes the hammer for yellow. Well, this is a tricky one because you can't remove anything from play, remember. So it's going to have to play some sort of tap. You might also see how there there isn't really a skip in this game, but the two teammates can uh, sort of communicate and point at things. Well, that's a pretty good result. Cuts it down to 1 there, I think. So, so in that end, red was really able to just control the whole 4-foot area. Uh, that and nice that's run. what I wonder whether both teams kind of diving towards the button sort of start to run out of space straight away. Uh, so another steal for red. And wow, we're already into the third end. Six end games here. This is how we're going to accomplish 14 draws in the next uh, six hours. Yes. Um, Clarification of the rules, when I said no takeouts, you are allowed to remove your own stones from play. It's only your opponent's stones that you can't remove. So that may come into play at some point. So sorry, uh, thrown to the uh, biting the forefoot. So I think we'll see quite a common, uh, oh, common strategy. And I don't really like that yellow throw just because I think it's good to be controlling the front. See, see, as you can see there, now Red's already knocked it to the back four, and now he's really controlling that front area. I think I would have preferred almost a, I know it sounds silly, but a freeze on top of the red that was thrown first. But I can verify that I am probably the worst short spiel player in the history of short spiel. Not that it has a very long history, but. Short house. Short house beg your pardon, I am absolutely appalling at it, so I probably shouldn't be uh, criticizing anyone else. I think we're all going to be figuring it out, at least for the first few draws as uh, each team gets to gets to try out their first game. Yeah, an interesting shot there, though. A nice uh, tap back and roll to the wings. I actually quite like that. Everything's a lot more open now. Yeah, and I think that suits uh, Team with Hammer a little bit, just like traditional curling. So... Uh, Rob and Eli thinking this over, thinking about a little freeze maybe. Freezing to that back yellow. Yeah. And that's pretty good. Nice weight. One of the things that I noticed that it is much harder than it looks to throw the correct weight in the short house. You think, oh, that's really easy. I'll just, you know, use my arm and throw it there. But you'd be surprised. Well, so far, no one's been, um, you know, knocking any of their opponents' rocks out, having to replace them. So they're, they're not totally overshooting it. Uh, I think a delicate attempt there from KT Kovacs. Not, I don't think that was quite what they wanted. So Red still won. Red still won, but it's back four. 
So I expect to see this one go top four probably. And then will be another difficult situation for Yellow. And really the stone that's absolutely killing them is that one that was thrown first. The one that's biting top four. So as we see more of this, I think we will uh, get to understand a bit more. Well, this looks a little, little bit too much weight here. Yeah, I think he would have preferred to throw that lighter. I kind of just replaced the stone. There. Yeah, so a nice chance to score, but I think it will just be for one for uh, for yellow. I think if you'd rob on his last one, if he'd been top four, it would be another steal, but. Nice, shot. nice, nice little shot there for one. So this game pretty tight so far. Um, sometimes you do get teams running away with it in short spiel. Like it's not uncommon to get four ender. Well, Haley made it very clear at the uh, during the instructions earlier that all four enders should be documented. So uh, hopefully we'll get a nice collection of those from today that'll uh, appear on the website. And this first stone, nicely, again, uh, biting top four. And we'll see a lot of that from the uh, team throwing first. See, now I think one of the things you could try is a freeze, corner freeze. Um, to the left? Either side, but yeah, to the left. Oh, that's savvy. Oh, this one very deep. Oh, might we go all the way through? Oh, no. no. Back 12, but I don't really like drawing straight around because then it's an easy tap back for the opposition. So we'll see what Yell does here. I think they would put another one in the top four area, yeah. Yep, they're starting to figure out that strategy. It's a really nice situation here at the moment. And I think might see a little bit of control. No, it might be trying to go all the way around. Barry. I mean, you do have the advantage. You can stretch all the way to the side of the hack. So it gives you some more sort of angles to play with. Sure has. Not bad. Didn't quite get it underneath. So yellow. Well, yellow could have hit this directly, but it looks like they're going to play a little tap up, uh, which I don't mind. Don't mind that at all, because then you leave your stone in the top eight. I think that one just not quite the line they wanted. So open things up more. Yeah, opens things up a bit, but I think Yellow would prefer to keep it closed there. So I think we'll see a tap back on the uh, shot stone. Oh, there's a four ender over on sheet C. Oh, and we have our first four ender already. Nice. I think, oh, we're going to see a lot of those. Yep, they're, they're getting a camera to document it. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, a freeze was played. Maybe going for a setup. Interesting. <laughs> and a pretty nice throw there. Yellow. It's difficult to score. And Ooh, yeah. Oh, a pretty bad result there. Just knocking yellow in for two there. Well, we're already two, but not being able to do anything about it. So it's two yellow. So things turning around a bit. Once again, got that top eight throw. You can think of it as your central line guard, maybe? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, it's in the center. It's sort of able to draw behind it. But close enough to the button that it's useful. 
Yeah. So, um, Red, I'm going to draw a round. It's interesting because you can get a little bit of curl. I mean, it, maybe it's more just throwing it at an angle. But it again, it's really hard to completely bury a rock. Again, I'm not, I mean, I like I say, I'm the worst short house player ever, but I'm not convinced by that strategy of drawing around immediately. Well, what do you think would be better? I've got a game <laughs> coming up later. I well, I think insights. you could either maybe freeze to the t first one. I mean, in this case, the yellow is only top eight, so maybe the freeze isn't best, but maybe just tap it back directly. Because mm. you want to control the front. That's a good idea. And by tap drawing it. behind, you're just inviting a, um, your stone to be moved into the back well, of the house. A tap back only works if it's your own rock that you're tapping back. But in that case, like yellow, that might that might have been a better idea. But we'll see. We'll see what goes. A uh, pretty nice shot there, actually, for uh, the yellow stones. So maybe so some a sort of right double here. A little tap back double. No, or maybe. Just gonna go into the pocket. Yeah, it's not enough weight to move on that Mahar. Well, yeah, it, it can be moved yet by Yell though, by uh, stretching out to their right hand side, our left side as we look at it. Yeah. You can go through the port and uh, squeeze the red out to the side. As long as they don't jam on that back yellow. And uh, not really stretching out to the side as much as they could here. Maybe they just feel comfortable with that. This looks pretty good. Yeah, nice. Nicely done. So now we're what, they're seeing three yellow? Two. Uh, well, it's hard to say. It looks like it's at least two. It could be three. Good afternoon to everyone who's joined us. If you are really confused by what's happening, this is the first ever short spiel, short house curling one spiel, coming to you from the Potomac Curling Club. We are we're innovators down here. Um, this is draw one of fourteen. That's right. All to commence in the next uh, six or so hours. I believe the final is at 9 p.m., is that right? That sounds right to me. Um, and we will be with you, broadcasting. Um, and in case you're also wondering, there are six games going on simultaneously. Uh, four on the near houses, so close to the warm room, and two on Sheets B and C at the far house. Uh, depending on when this game ends, we might switch to another one. but. Um, there's no way we can uh, really comment on all six games at once. Yes, there's so much action so quickly here. Uh, we're just going to concentrate on one game at a time. We'll try and give you uh, results from other sheets if we can. But, uh, well, that's uh, not a good result there for Rob and Eli. It looks like it might be three yellow there. I missed it. Yeah, we would like confirmation of the I score. I will go check on scores. It was uh, at least I'm two, I think. It might be, be three. Be right back. Either way, a uh, a big lead for for the yellow. This one coming into the Butson area, a little bit deep. Straight tap back coming here. Pretty nice shot. Both teams have got pretty good weight control already in this uh, short house. Uh, like I say, it's one of the it's more difficult than you think to uh, just throw with your arm. So uh, both teams seem to have mastered that fairly quickly. And another well, a little tap here, keeping the yellow top four. Pretty good. I think we'll see Rob use uh, the angles. No, well, maybe not. I was thinking you could squeeze that yellow out sideways, but <laughs> let's see. Ooh, he's going for the back yellow a bit there. Just trying to freeze to it. What we're seeing here is a lot of um, both teams sort of chasing the button area right now, and I think it'll be interesting to see as the uh, 
strategy evolves over the course of the the afternoon and the evening, whether that continues to be the plan or whether teams uh, try some different things. Shaping up pretty well for Robin Eli, sitting three. Only one stone each to go. Um, but Rob needs uh, Robin Eli need a four ender, I think, here to tie this game. So, I'm not sure what the call was here, but don't think that helped them at all. So, oh dear. <laughs> so, like, a straight draw here for uh, four render for, uh, for Rob. All right, I've got score updates, although I think by the time I collected them all, they're probably out of date. But on the near sheet A, we have it's red three, yellow two after four ends. Sheet B, it's red two, yellow five after five ends. Sheet C, which is, uh, sorry, sheet C is three red, five yellow after four ends. Sheet D is four red, three yellow after three ends. And then the far sheet B is six red, five yellow after five. Thanks, Judy. Meanwhile, I think this game has been tied up as this four ender was just yeah. scored. And so, well, after we take the photos, <laughs> there will be a tiebreaker. And so for short spiel, we yes, have two. special rules for tiebreakers. So um, each team will pick one player who throws a skips rock. And the goal is to throw as close to the hog line as possible without touching it or crossing it. The hog line, that's interesting. That's right. And it's same rules, you, can, you have to have a foot in the hack parallel to the baseline. And so we'll see. I've never seen this before, so it sounds like it's quite challenging, to be honest. This is the sixth end now, or? Well, that's right, we have played our six ends. Okay, this is a tiebreaker. Um, so we're into the tiebreaker. Hopefully they read the, the rules closely and are, and are shooting for the hog and not the button. Yeah, it looks like they, they do understand. So this is Rob Chester throwing his first and only stone. And pretty good, he gets it to about the, uh, well, if it was a guard, you would call it uh, maybe a one and a half, two. So definitely don't want to be heavy. So now it's uh, uh, Katie Kovac is going to throw for yellow. And I think they're wondering whether to move the redstone out of the way before they throw. I think they are. So they're going to measure it with the laser. This is why they had the laser. Yeah. I hadn't quite appreciated. Uh, well, it's a good idea. Uh, so they're just going to measure it from the hog line. And then they'll take that stone away so it's not in the way. <laughs> so we will see what happens. They've made the measure. It was a pretty good throw there by Rob. So uh, Katie's got her work cut out to beat that without going over. This one looks a little light. I don't think it's going to get there. No, yeah. It's like a three guard in normal Oh sets of dear. So oh, and uh, disappointment there. So uh, their winners <laughs> are Team Red, which is Rob and Eli. Yep. And <laughs> so our first game, we had tiebreaker skips rocks. What time did we start? About 20 minutes ago? Yes, that's right. Um, right. So that is draw one, is just finishing up. A um, couple of games still, still going, but uh, they're in the last end. So we're going to be uh, we're going to have continuous draws here at the short spiel. So we're going to be <laughs> right back. Yes, let's have a quick interview here with uh, uh, let's get him a, with get the him winning connected. team member Rob Chester. We'll just get him set up. <laughs> uh, this is entirely unplanned, so I'm going to quickly come up with a list of questions <laughs> for to ask Rob. We're just getting him mic'd up here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're. Are we on with Rob? 
Hello. Awesome, Rob. So, your first ever short house experience? Uh, no. 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 We've played many a times while drunk. So uh, does that make you a bit of a ringer in this tournament? No, not at all. Are you feeling good about your plan, your prospects? Well, I, I did for the first couple ends, um, but after that, not so much. I did not expect to take four in the sixth by any means. That was not part of our plan. A remarkable comeback. We've so been discussing this. There's gonna be probably going to be a lot of evolution of strategy as people figure out what they're doing. Yeah, I, I think you have to throw it um, in the back four, or what we would now look at this and call this the top four, because I think the minute you start going past the T-line, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the same. But absolutely. we were able to knock some stuff back, and then we were fortunate with their miss to hit us in to give us an opportunity to play for four there. I thought I threw my last one a little heavy, but fortunately uh, it stuck around. Yeah. And then we weren't quite sure what to do with the measuring for the, the draw to the hog line. And it, when I first threw it, I thought, oh, that looked pretty good. And then when we went back and looked at it, I'm like, oh, I'm nowhere near <laughs> You know, uh, well. Seven feet away, so. I mean, uh, it's an interesting tactic of throwing to the hog line because then it's, you know, it's not a weight you've been throwing the whole rest of the game. and uh, No, and you can't, like, slide out, which doesn't help matters. So um, <laughs> I just kind of was like, well, I think this is the weight. And and I and when I released it, I thought I might have been heavy, but it, it's, it's a lot further distance than I think we give it credit for. Absolutely. Well, so. uh, well congratulations, Rob. Thank you. On your win. We will see you in round two. Maybe. I hope so. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, maybe in the, in the top sheet, I don't know. But thank you. That was Rob Chester there from the winning team on our feature game. That was fun. All right, well, draw one is concluded. Right. We will be back momentarily with draw two. Stick with us. See you in a minute. <laughs>